Hi everyone, so typically I've just started filming and it's just started raining. But yeah, I am here today with a sort of April TBR for you. Now I don't normally do TBRs, as you're probably well aware, I very rarely have done any for the last year or so now, mainly for readathons. But I thought I'd do one today because I sorted out my Kindle and my review copies the other day, as I mentioned in my previous vlog, and I thought that with that I should probably therefore work through the review copies that I have got stored up and so that pretty much gives me a TBR for April. So I thought I'd talk you through the books that I will be hopefully reading and reviewing in April. All of these are review copies, I will be reading other stuff but that can pretty much be anything, mainly Harry Potter. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I'd sort of talk you through what's going to be coming out in April. So this is a sort of really good resource as well for just April releases and it's going to cover so many genres as ever with me. The first book I want to talk to you about is School for Psychics by Casey Archer and this comes out on the 3rd of April. I'm currently reading this book and it's actually really really good. I'm enjoying it a lot. I will probably finish it tonight to be honest and right now it's looking at possibly a four star read. Maybe it might drop to three depending on how it ends but it's sort of... imagine Harry Potter but for psychics. It's about a psychic school and people who in some cases don't even know that they're psychic and they get recruited for this school and it's quite a hardcore school. It, it's not easy by any means. They really put you through their paces but also there's the typical themes of friendship and you get a lot of insight into what actually happens in the lessons which I know is something that quite a few people enjoy about things like Harry Potter. You get the insight into the lessons and that makes for a much more interesting read than just, oh, I went to psychic school. And then this happens outside of school. Like you get really in-depth sight into the lessons and what it actually means to go to that school, which makes it really exciting. Okay, it's about Teddy Cannon and she is a 24 year old woman. And so it's not even like it's like typical YA age either. We're looking at like early 20s, which is something a bit more fresh and unique. The next book I want to talk to you about isn't actually coming out in April. It came out in April two years ago, but the reason why I'm reading this one is because I'm going to be reading the next one, which does come out this April. So the next book I want to show you is The Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor. And yeah, as I said, this one's been out a couple of years now. So this is set in London in 1666 as the great fire consumes everything in its path. The body of a man is found in the ruins of St Paul's Cathedral, stabbed in the neck, thumbs tied behind his back. It also then says, a woman on the run, the son of a traitor, James Marwood, is forced to hunt the killer through the city's devastated streets. There he encounters a determined young woman who will stop at nothing to secure her freedom. A killer seeking revenge. When her second murder victim is discovered in the fleet ditch, Marwood is drawn into the political and religious intrigue of Westminster and across the path of a killer who has nothing to lose. So yeah, that, that looked like it was going to tie into sort of my thrill-loving self along with my historical-loving self. Like, a historical thriller is quite an exciting thing for me. So, the sequel is called The Fire Court. I'm not going to tell you anything about what it is. I don't know whether there's going to be any spoilers, so I'm not going to look into it at all. But yeah, this one comes out on the 5th of April. I am, like, hopefully going to really love the first one and then read this one straight afterwards. Next we have Too Close to Breathe by Olivia Kiernan. And this also comes out on the 5th of April. A lot of these books, by the way, come out on the 5th of April. Cheers. So this is described as being perfect for friends of Tana French, Jane Casey and Gillian Flynn. So it says, too soon to see, polished, professional, perfect, dead. Respected scientist Dr. Eleanor Costello is found hanged in her immaculate home at the scene at the very picture of a suicide. Too late to hide. DS Frankie Sheehan is handed the case and almost immediately spots foul play. Sheehan is a trained profiler and is seeking a murderer with a talent for death. Too close to breathe. As Frankie strives to paint a picture of the killer and their victim, she starts to sense they are part of a larger, darker canvas on which the lines between the two blur. So again, that looks right up my nice thriller murderer streak. I do wonder whether this haul is going to make me look like some sort of psycho, but you must know me by now and know the sort of books that I enjoy picking up. So next we have Two Steps Forward by Graham Simsian and Anne Buist. And this is a smart and funny story 
with two misfits where they walk 2,000 kilometers along the Camino to find themselves and perhaps each other. So this isn't quite my typical sort of read but I really enjoyed The Rosie Project so I was like oh a chance to read something else by that author. Why not? Next we have Clean by Juno Dawson. I really enjoyed a Juno Dawson book earlier this year, um, Being a Boy. And so since then I've been keeping my eyes out for, you know, other Juno Dawson books. And this one looked a really gritty read. This one covers um, like the topic of drugs and trying to get clean from them, hence the subject and the cover that you've got there. And so it'll be something a bit different, something I've normally, I'd normally read and it will probably be really gripping and really interesting knowing Juno Daw Dawson's writing. Next we have Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi and this is a book that was around on booktube when I first started and was getting a lot of hype a few years ago now and for some reason the publishers have whacked it on here as a new release. I don't know whether it was just never released in the UK, I should probably have done my research but yeah this is now available in the UK as of the 5th of April 2018 and in case you're not aware of what this series is about the description on here on here says X-Men meets The Handmaid's Tale in this first instalment in an epic and romantic YA fantasy series. I'm not going to say anything more than that, most of you will have heard of this book anyway. Next we have Skin Deep by Liz Nugent and this also comes out on the 5th of April and my friend Eva Fred Weasley Died Laughing reviewed this last week. She really really enjoyed it, I think she gave it like three or four stars. So I'm pretty excited for this thriller, you know what I'm like with my thrillers. So it says, I could probably have been an actress. It is not difficult to pretend to be somebody else. Isn't that what I've been doing most of my life? I'm not going to read any more than that. I don't want to spoil a thriller for myself. These descriptions aren't always the best at not spoiling you. Next we have Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer is someone who is really highly admired on booktube, I suppose, what with her Luna Chronicles series, which I've still not read. Then there's also the Heartless... I don't know if it was a series, was it a series or just a single book? Anyway, that also got a lot of attention on booktube and now this is her latest release, again coming out on the 5th of April and this says secret identities, extraordinary powers, she wants vengeance, he wants justice. The renegades are a syndicate of prodigies, humans with extraordinary abilities who emerged from the ruins of a crumbled society and established peace and order where chaos reigned. So it's got a very sort of x men -y feel to it basically. Next we have Stories That We Tell Ourselves by Sarah Francois. This again is on the 5th of April. And this says, Frank and Joan's marriage is in trouble. Having spent three decades failing to understand each other in their unfinished house in the French Alps, Joan's frustrations with her in inattentive husband have reached breaking point. Frank retreating ever further into his obscure hobbies is distracted by a pistolary affair with his long lost German girlfriend. Things are getting tense, but it's Christmas and a couple are preparing to welcome home their three far-flung children. The only worry I've got with this one is, it's set in Christmas and I'm reading it in April and it's coming out in April. What? Bad timing maybe? Maybe it works, we'll see. And next we have got The Sapphire Widow by Dinah Jeffries, and this also comes out on the 5th of April. And I've read one of the Dinah Jeffries book before, that was The Tea Planter's Wife, and I absolutely adored that, and I gave it five stars and couldn't stop shouting about it from the rooftops. So I know I love this author's writing, so when I had the chance to pick up another of her books, I was like, heck yes. So she writes really sort of gripping, emotional, historical fictions, and this one sounds like it'll be just along that sort of street as well. So this is set in Ceylon in 1935. Louisa Reeve, the daughter of a successful successful British gem trader and her husband Elliot, a charming thrill-seeking businessman, seem like the couple who have it all except what they want, what they long for more than anything, a child. While Louisa struggles with miscarriages, Elliot is increasingly absent, spending much of his time at a nearby cinnamon plantation overlooking the Indian Ocean. After his sudden death, Louisa is left alone to solve the mystery he left behind. I really love that Dinah Jeffries also always manages to get a bit of mystery and intrigue into these novels. They always make for really, really gripping, thrilling reads. Next we have Guilt by Amanda Robson, and this one doesn't come out until the 19th of April. We've finally got some variety on release date. 
So this is described as being thrilling, unputdownable, a fabulous roller coaster of a read. Your sister, her secret, the betrayal. There is no bond greater than blood. I don't want to look into it any more than that. I don't want to ruin a thriller for myself. Next we have The Family at Number 13 by S.D. Monaghan. And this comes out the 27th of April. And this says, the most perfect lives can hide the darkest secrets. Mary has everything beautiful and rich. She lives on an exclusive street in the heart of the city, in a house with gorgeous views and an immaculately maintained garden. Her life looks perfect. I don't want to look into this one anymore than that either. I really, I'm so careful about not wanting to spoil like thrillers for myself, but this again looks like it could be a fantastic read. And finally, we have If He Wakes by Zoe Lear, and this is due to be published on the 30th of April, 2018. And this says, you can always trust your best friend, can't you? When Rachel discovers a Twitter message arranging a romantic liaison, she assumes her husband is having an affair and follows him. What she witnesses is so much worse, a hit and run using his car. Again, I'm not gonna read it below that, but I am so excited at the prospects of this one too. If I get to all these books, this will be a, an amazing feat for me, but also a fantastic reading one. Some of these looks look absolutely fabulous. So if you are excited for any of these releases, if they've already been on your radar, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. I am hoping and planning to sit down doing proper sit down eat videos to review all of these books. Hoping is to hoping I get to them all. Wish me luck because it will be my best reading month of the year and probably for several years so far if I manage it but I'm desperate to not get behind with these review copies now that I am sorting myself out. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me just there. If you want to see more book reviews and other bookish content from me, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.